Do you know it is said that grace is mentioned 170 times in the Bible? Now, the real question is, what exactly does grace mean and how does it operate? Come, let's find out today on Faith Life. My name is Dorcas. I am always, always glad to have you on Faith Life. And to talk about grace today is the pastor of Fountain of Life Church, Grace Family, Pastor Tolu Ige. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for on your invitation. Now, the first mention of grace in the Bible was Genesis chapter 6, verse 8, where he says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How do we find grace? Okay, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, tells us, For the grace of God has appeared unto all men, giving salvation mm -hmm. to us. And verse 12 says, teaching us to deny every form of ungodliness. Now I'm paraphrasing. So grace of God is available to all. John chapter, John 16, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, I said earlier that you cannot separate God's grace from God's love. Yes. So, God's grace is available to everyone who believe, and by faith to believe that, and, and so grace is available to all. If I, if I'm correct enough, it is not something that we find. Then that's what you're saying. It's just available to us. It's available for for us in the New Testament. It's available for everyone. So once you believe, you have it. All right, Sam. When you are defining grace, you talked about favor. There's usually a bit of confusion in determining what grace and favor means. I think there is a very thin line in between. So is there a difference between grace and favor? Well, in my definition, I said unmerited favor. Okay. Okay. So uh, I could have favor with you. Maybe I've done something great for you. Yes, sir. And I have a favor from with you and you might choose to return that favor uh, maybe as a form of kindness or gesture okay sometimes in the future or even now but in this case it's an unmerited favor we do not deserve it god chose to to take that position towards us so uh, it's an unmerited favor so you're I not hope, saying I, I hope that is that's so, wait, clear. so you're not saying grace is favor and favor is grace it's an, unmerited, it's, it's an unmerited favor. It will be good to qualify Grace that favor as an unmerited, as an unmerited favor. favor. All right. Because there is nothing that we have done to deserve it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. So, but, all right, sir. This grace, is it only for those that are born again or is it just for everybody? If you still go back to Ephesians chapter 2, which is very hard for yes. our conversation today. Yes. It is the grace that saved us. Okay. So it's 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 available for those that are for saved. those that are saved, and then for those that are unsaved, grace is also available. Okay. As a matter of fact, we begin to grow in grace once we've come to the knowledge of Jesus. Okay. So it's available for all, and it's functional in the life of anyone who has an open hand towards grace. Okay. So. In the first place, the primary work of grace in our life is first to save us from okay. sin. So it's for, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. Amazing, for everyone. amazing. Thank you so much, sir. Um, I think different types of grace. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to put it that way. I would rather say expressions of grace. Of grace. So you have the saving grace, yes, which is a form. Uh, which is a form of expression of grace, which is where, which is the beginning. Mm -hmm. Grace first saving us. All right, Ephesians chapter chapter two, verse four and eight. It's still very relevant here, mm -hmm. and that grace saved us from being lost, which is in, in eternal damnation, bringing us to the knowledge of Christ, to the completed works that Jesus wrote on the cross mm -hmm. for all of us. All right, so grace saved us. By grace, we have been saved. That's an expression of grace. Okay. Then you have what I, what, what we can call the strengthening grace. Okay. 
that grace is the grace that, that saved us from, uh, from uh, the works of the flesh or strengthens us against uh, the, the, the works of the flesh, you know, everything that has to do with uh, the, 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 the fruits of the flesh, the, uh, the drunkenness, lying, uh, etc., etc. So the strengthening grace does that? Yes, the, 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 the sanctifying grace, I beg your pardon, the sanctifying grace does that. And if you look at Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, say grace teaches us to deny every form of ungodliness. I must say here that grace is not an excuse to, to continue in sin, mm -hmm. which is why Paul was very clear. Paul says, can we continue in sin and expect the grace of God to abound? God forbid. Because if you are a true recipient of God's grace, you will have, uh, you will have a good understanding that grace, as much as it is a gift that we have not worked for, also has handed over a responsibility to us. Uh, the responsibility of good works. So grace, uh, which is sanctifying grace, right, teaches us to deny every form of ungodliness. Mm -hmm. And then so you have uh, the strengthening grace. This is an expression of grace that strengthens us against uh, uh, attack and, and the works of the devil, mm -hmm. gi gi giving us strength to, to stand firm even in the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. So then you have the, the sharing grace. You see that expression of grace in, in the Philippians church, the mm -hmm. church in Macedonia. Or a church writing to the Macedonian church while it was in Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, mm -hmm. said, These guys, even though they do not have so much more, but they are bound in the grace of giving. Though they were poor with their challenges, they were still able mm -hmm. to give. Mm -hmm. So that's an expression of grace in the life of anyone that has embraced it. So that's a, a, a sharing, sharing grace. Sharing grace. Yeah. And then you have the serving grace. Serving. Yes, the serving grace. This is a grace that uh, that enables us to 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 walk the works of righteousness, to 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 give our gifts, right, in the service of God, uh, in in the betterment of our community, in the betterment of humanity. And God loves us so much. You know, Jesus was was clear. He said the whole of the law is summed up in in these two ways. Love the Lord thy God and your neighbor as yourself. So an expression of grace in serving helps us in fulfilling, you know, that second part of the law, which is, you know, giving our best in service to, to the betterment of humanity. And God, God certainly will love that. All right, so we've established that there are no types of grace, yes, but, but we have expressions, different expressions. Expression. Yes. We have the saving grace, yes. the strengthening grace, yes. the sharing grace, the serving grace, and the sanctifying grace. Yes. Amazing. Is it possible that some people operate in a higher dimension of grace than others? Uh, then again, I want us to look at it this way. It's about knowledge that is available to yeah. us. It's not about growing in that grace or in the way you put it, maybe a higher level of grace. Okay. But it's just about embracing. The more you embrace grace, the more the grace finds expressions in you. So in other words, you, it is a function of you growing in the knowledge of the grace. Okay. So you grow into it, right? I wouldn't want to say there is a higher level of grace. Mm -hmm. It's just about you knowing as much as you desire you have. So you grow in that knowledge of grace. And you want to look at Second Peter chapter 3, yeah. verse 18. Oh, let me start from verse 17. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your, from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. You grow in the knowledge. So the more you grow, 
the more you desire to know God, the more you, your, your great, the grace of God you find expression. So basically, you grow in grace. You it's grow in possible grace. to grow in grace. Can you please give us practical ways, you know, in which we can grow in grace? Okay, it's simple. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thy shall meditate in day and night to do and observe according to what is written in it. Yes. For then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. It's just about spending time with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. spending time with the Word. It, it, the daily commitment to spending, it's a God is not partial. Yeah. You, 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 if you spend more time with the Holy Spirit, He releases Himself more into you. Okay. It's just about being consistent with your devotion, your meditation, the studying of the Word. You water yourself with the Word and you keep growing daily. In the Word. That's the way it is. Psalm 1, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of his comfort, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and therein. He meditates day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth fruits in the, in the season. Amazing. Great. Now, while we talked about um, saving grace, yes. sanctifying grace, and strengthening grace, I think I was able to really understand what they meant or what they mean. Now, can you please shed more light on sharing grace and serving grace? Sharing grace is an expression of God's love to our neighbor, to our community. And the more we do this, the more we can stand against or the more we'll be able to deal with uh, selfishness. And the principle of the, of the kingdom is, is seed. Yeah, seed, seed. And, and uh, when you give, certainly you will receive. Right, seed time and harvest time is a principle of the kingdom. So if you give your kindness, it will come to, back to you. If you give encouragement, it's going to come back to you. If you give of your substance, it is going to come, it's, it's going to come back to you. So that's just the way it works in the kingdom. So beyond the fact that you'll be unselfish, it also deals with lack in our lives. So... Uh, Sharing grace is, is, is great. And everyone should grow in, in that expression. Okay. Sharing whatever it is that you can share with, with people. So you, knowing fully well that it helps to deal with selfishness and lack. Okay, so um, you've established the fact that our seeds are connected to grace. Grace is what gives us the ability to give. Yes. To give of ourselves, to yes. give of our substance, yes. to give of our talents. Yes. Grace is what makes it possible. Yes. The grace of God. Okay, thank you, sir. Can you please talk about serving grace? All right, so the, 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 the serving grace is an expression of grace that helps us to serve the way we are supposed, supposed to serve. And the implication of that in our lives is that it, 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 that it deals with pride, right, uh, covetousness, and, and greed. Thank you so much, Pastor Tulu. You're welcome. It was a really insightful session with you. My take home today is that for everything we do as Christians, as children of God, it, is, it can only, only be by the grace of God. If you have been blessed today, like I have been, kindly drop a comment in our comment section and do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. God bless you.